Ford makes different styles of transit van to suit different market segments. Here's the largest kind, the biggest and most capable LCV the Blue Oval brand has ever made. Operators may be surprised at its efficiency, but the tough usability on offer is as familiar as ever. Here's a very complete commercial vehicle indeed. Think of a big-ish van, and it's a pretty sure bet you'll be thinking about this one, Ford's Transit. With over 7 million worldwide sales on the board, it's the Blue Oval brand's third best-selling model. And this is the biggest, toughest modern era version. So successful has this vehicle been across Europe that its very name has almost passed into our language. A byword for van versatility with a history that goes all the way back to 1965. Of the many transits produced since then, an astonishing 700,000 are still pounding global roads. Not many of these are originals, of course. That version, facelifted in 1978 before complete redesign in 1986, was then further updated in 1994. A lot more common, though, is the vehicle introduced in 2000, one that featured a choice of either front or rear-wheel drive for the first time. Ford fundamentally restyled it in 2006, then added more efficient Euro 5 engines four years later. Which brings us up to date and the model we're considering here. In 2014, it took its place as the largest, the heaviest and the most capable member of a transit lineup that now includes four completely separate designs covering every segment of the light commercial vehicle market. These range from the small Transit Courier through the compact yet spacious Transit Connect to the medium-sized Transit Custom model that frees this flagship version up to focus on really large loads. It's 11% more spacious than the previous generation model, which makes it big enough to be the first large Transit to be sold in North America. So it's got to be good, and on paper at least, the signs are promising. We're promised best-in-class efficiency, significantly reduced maintenance and repair costs, exceptional drivability and smart load space features. We're promised a lot. Can this transit deliver? Let's find out. Back in the late 90s, we interviewed former F1 world champion Jackie Stewart. He'd been working with Ford in the development of future models as yet a few years away from launch. Which had impressed him most? What we wanted to know. Expecting him to talk of a sports coupe or a hot hatch. Instead, he raved about the new generation transit, talking of steering, feel and response, simply unheard of amongst LCVs. All of which was duly delivered when that product got to market and is retained here in this modern era version. The steering feel being especially impressive. Like any commercial vehicle, it handles better fully loaded, but even in the unladen state that I've got here, cornering response is predictable and body roll is well controlled. You'll find it even better if you're one of the few who opt to specify their transit with rear wheel drive rather than the usual front driven layout. Not that that's why customers typically opt for rear wheel drive. Superior grip when heavily laden is just one of the reasons why this configuration can handle heavier payloads and tow more easily. Hauling a braked trailer of up to 2,800 kilograms in most guises. So easily would it do so, in fact, that for many, the all-wheel drive system also developed to run with this transit platform is not really needed. All of which means that it's just as well that the brakes are up to the job. This was something Ford improved on this vehicle back in 2006, adding disc brakes all round. You'll also want this transit to be manoeuvrable, hence a decently tight turning circle that typically on a mainstream panel van variant like this one offers a wall-to-wall -wall turning circle of 12.6 metres. Now that shrinks to 11.9 metres curb to curb. And should you be at an uphill junction, standard hill start assist will help you get away smoothly. 
Under the bonnet these days, the range is based around one engine. A 2.2-litre TDCI Duratorque unit developed in conjunction with Peugeot Citroën which can operate with a clever auto stop start system and is offered in three states of tune for front wheel drive customers. With either 100, 125 or 155 PS. It's worth mentioning that some of Ford's rivals offer even more power than this. So if you regularly approach your van's total payload capacity, that might be a factor. For most, though, this Transit TDCI unit will be quite adequately pokey, with a surge of power from just 1,500 RPM, and even the entry-level TDCI 100 developing a useful 310 newton meters of torque, a figure rising as high as 385 newton meters if you opt for the 155 PS version. Now you have to get used to accessing that grunt across a fairly narrow 7,000 RPM power band though. The other thing that you'll notice at the wheel, particularly on a motorway cruise with these engines, is how much quieter they are. And that's thanks in part to the slightly notchy six-speed manual transmission with long gearing that's standard across the range. And of course the provision of a standard bulkhead across the lineup helps further here. It's all a world away from the rattly old TDI diesels the transit buyers had to put up with not so long ago. It'll help to understand the styling of this transit if I tell you that it's the first to be sold in the USA, replacing the aging Ford E-Series. Hence, a more striking contemporary front end with its high-tech headlamps, a look featuring plenty of the Blue Oval brand's kinetic design cues. Deep rubbing strips extend their protection to the rear wheel arches so as to lessen the risk of the sides collecting minor scrapes. And the indicators are now prominently displayed on the wing mirrors, though urban users might fear the way that makes them more prone to damage. One neat touch hasn't changed. You still need your ignition key to open the bonnet, a nice security feature. Another thing that hasn't changed is the robust toughness that's long characterized the transit's approach to the large LCV segment. It's the kind of feel you'd maybe expect from a Mercedes or maybe a Volkswagen, but at more mainstream pricing. Ford has certainly put everything into making sure that continued reputation is justified. This vehicle in development covering the equivalent of 11 million kilometers, that's the same as driving around the globe 275 times, with more than 500,000 kilometers of that total covered by actual transit customers. A lot of the testing focused on real-world use, with one, for example, ensuring that this Ford could strike a 150mm curb at 37 miles per hour and drive away without damage. Inside that solidity continues, built from the Turkish factory seemingly strong, but here blended with much more of a car-like ambience than was the case with this model's predecessor. There's a much smarter instrument panel than before, along with plusher trim and materials than you'd expect from a van. The central display for marshalling all the infotainment function is a little small, and the cluster of buttons below it take a little mastering. I also think that the positioning of the controls for the air conditioning system could be better. They're too far over on the passenger side of the dashboard. These things apart though, the cabin is a very well thought out piece of design work. Normally a three seater in the straightforward panel van guys that I'm trying here. As ever, the dash mounted gear lever falls beautifully to hand and I'd really like the tactile four spoke steering wheel with its chromed inserts. Getting comfortable in front of it is easier than it was in the previous generation versions thanks to a more comfortable eight-way adjustable driver's seat. Even the angle of the cushion can be altered. It also helps that the steering wheel fixed in the previous model can now be adjusted for both reach and rake. One of Ford's findings when researching how transits are used was the importance of spaces to store stuff.
So you'll find a range of smart storage solutions, including a full-width overhead shelf and a large hidden compartment under the dual passenger seat. There's also a lidded compartment on top of the instrument panel that conceals a 12-volt power point, plus AUGs in and USB ports, as well as deep bins in each of the doors and a spacious lidded glove box. Lockable here, though unfortunately it isn't in the base spec. To that can be added shelves above the windscreen, as well as further shelves on top of the dashboard in front of the passenger, and cup holders at either end of the fascia. A 230 volt power socket can be provided to charge tools or laptops without the need for special adapters, which is just as well for many operators will want to use this vehicle as a mobile office. To help them, the centre section of the back of the inboard passenger seat flips down to reveal a desk complete with pen tray, two cup holders and an elasticated band to keep your paperwork from flying about the cab. It's the kind of thing other rivals also offer, and this transit just had to have. What the competition can't match is Ford's clever Sync voice-activated in-car connectivity system, complete with an innovative AppLink feature which enables drivers to control their favourite smartphone apps using voice commands. Let's start with what you'll pay with around 450 derivatives from which to choose, giving you a short steer on transit pricing is pretty difficult. Still, I'll try. Excluding the dreaded VAT, base trim L2 short wheelbase models can be had at surprisingly affordable prices, starting from around the £20,000 mark, with the rest of the standard L3 medium wheelbase lineup ranging anything up to around £26,000, depending upon the variant you're looking at. In rough terms, you need to be looking at adding around £700 to the cost of an L2 short wheelbase variant like this one if you want to upgrade it to beefier L3 medium wheelbase spec. And about the same again if you want the L4 long wheelbase version. Swapping between roof heights is also quite affordable. You're looking at a £500 premium to go from this ordinary H2 medium roof model to the higher H3 high roof variant. If you can't be bothered with all of that choice and simply want the tallest, longest transit available, then list pricing for the largest jumbo transit model starts at around £28,000. As for rivals, well, there are three shared designs that it's mainly aimed at. First, the vehicle you'll find variously badged as either a Peugeot Boxer, a Citroen Relay or a Fiat Ducato. These models will be priced quite similarly to this Ford, as will be the shared design we know as either a Vauxhall Movano, a Renault Master or a Nissan NV400. For a little more than you'd pay for this transit or any of the alternatives in this segment just mentioned, you could also consider the Mercedes Sprinter VW Crafter collaboration. Having considered all of these, it'd be understandable if toughness, value, efficiency and ease of use brought you back to this Ford, in which case you'll need to start the somewhat daunting process of trying to navigate your way around the various transit options. Something that I'm going to try and help you do here. So get your notebooks at the ready. I'd suggest that you start by choosing the type of vehicle you need for the job. Do you want a simple panel van like this one for packages only, or will you need to be carrying more than a couple of passengers at the same time? If so, you might want to consider something like the double cabin van variant with its permanent three-person rear seat, offered at a £1,300 model for model premium over the standard panel van version. If all you need to do is carry people though, then one of the transit minibus models in the rear wheel drive M2 bus range will suit you better. These can seat anywhere between 11 and 18 people, depending on your choice between the three wheelbase lengths and the two roof heights, with gross vehicle weights ranging between 3,500 and 4,500 kilograms. I should also mention the comprehensive transit chassis cab range, which features four wheelbases, five chassis frame lengths and five GVM gross vehicle mass options, ranging between 3.1 to 4.7 tonnes. 
Body style options include a two to three seat or single cab, a six to seven seat double cab, plus various pickup bodies. You can even get an L5 chassis cab derivative that accommodates five meter floats or box bodies. For the sake of things here though, let's assume that what you're looking for is a simple panel van, just like this one. I've already mentioned the four main wheelbase body length choices. This L2 short version, the L3 medium model and the jumbo version with their L4 long body shape. These will give you anything from just under 3 meters to just under 4.3 meters of load area length. The even longer L5 wheelbase is limited to double cab tipper and drop side models. Earlier too, I mentioned the options buyers have in choosing either the H2 medium or H3 high roof heights. These can give you either 1886 or 2025 millimeters of load area height. Next up, it's a question of deciding upon the heaviness of the loads you're likely to carry. Now, obviously, the heavier the likely load, the beefier the GVM or gross vehicle mass you're going to need. The cheapest entry-level panel van variant, which is only available in short wheelbase H2 medium roof guys, has a gross vehicle mass of 2,900 kilograms, so is badged 290. Beyond this, you get the usual roof and wheelbase choices I was just talking about. The next model GVM option is 3,100 kilograms, badged 310, and then so on in the same way through 330, 350, 430, and even 470 derivatives, though the 470 model is so large that you may need to pay extra for a tachograph. Of course, the model weight you choose will need to be matched with an appropriately torquey engine. All the full-size transit models get the same 2.2-litre TDCI unit operable via a six-speed manual transmission. But you do get a choice of outputs, either 100, 125 or 155 PS. Go for the 125 PS variant and there's the option of a frugal Econetic variant which gets a unique engine calibration, auto start stop and an acceleration control feature for particularly efficient returns. As for the drive layout, well, nearly all transit buyers choose conventional front wheel drive, but those needing to tow or take heavier loads may be better off looking at the rear wheel drive option available from the 350 gross vehicle mass upwards. Those who might need to regularly get across loose or slippery surfaces, building sites for example, may even want to consider the all wheel drive alternative. At this point, you should have a pretty good idea of what your ideal transit derivative is going to be. It's now just a case of finalizing your trim level. There are two, base and trend. Even the base variant gets you features like Bluetooth phone compatibility, an eight-way adjustable driver's seat with armrest, a full steel bulkhead, electric windows, a fold-out front passenger seat table, a sliding door, an overhead storage console, two 12-volt power points, and a decent quality MP3 compatible CD stereo with steering wheel remote controls, USB and iPod connectivity, plus an aux jack for portable music players. Provided you don't opt for the Econetic version, you also get a spare wheel too. There's remote central deadlocking too, along with buttons in the cab enabling you to lock and unlock doors that lock automatically at speeds above 5 miles per hour. Ideally though, you'd either find the extra budget or talk to your transit centre about a deal that could see you moving up to the plusher trend trim that I have here, recognisable by its smarter front grille. Now this spec gets you niceties that will really make life a lot easier and more pleasant. Things like projector style headlamps with static cornering lamps to light your way around the bends. Front fog lamps, auto headlamps and wipers, a heated windscreen, map reading lights, driver seat lumbar adjustment, power heated folding mirrors. Also you will get front and rear parking sensors. Now inside there's a leather trimmed four spoke steering wheel, there's a lockable glove box and cruise control. And in the load bay there's a half height trim board and an easy to clean load floor. Perhaps the neatest trend spec touch though is the clever Ford sink with emergency assistance setup. 
Through this, you can work MP3 players, Bluetooth enable your smartphone, and access USB drives with voice commands, plus get text-to-speak messaging. Most importantly, the system automatically calls the emergency services in accidents where the airbags are triggered. On to options. Now I'd want a second side sliding door and the LED load box lighting. Now the rear ladder might come in useful too if I was going to be loading items onto the roof. Fleet managers wanting to control their drivers might want to talk to their transit centre about an engine governor, a digital tachograph and maybe a larger fuel tank that's able to take up to 100 litres. Now owner drivers meanwhile might like the more comfortable 10-way adjustable driver's seat with optional seat heating. Now you could also go for satellite navigation and a rear view parking camera with trailer hitch assist. On to safety. Though front passenger and side curtain airbags are optional, only a single driver's airbag is standard. You do though get all the usual electronic assistance. There's ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective and emergency brake assist. Plus, it's good to see that ESP stability control is included in the deal across the range with load adaptive control that adjusts it to suit the weight that you're carrying. There's also tyre pressure monitoring, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, roll stability control and curve control which helps you stay on the road if you take a bend too fast. Options include a lane keeping assist system that stops dozy drivers drifting out of their lanes on the highway. A trailer sway control system if you specify the optional tow bar. And a driver alert setup that constantly monitors your driving behaviour and will warn you if it thinks you're becoming drowsy. Ford says that this generation transit model offers cargo capacity increased by up to 11% over its predecessor. But what does that actually mean in practice? To find out, using this straightforward L2 short wheelbase H2 medium roof variant as an example. Let's start, as usual, at the business end here at the rear. Now, like rivals, transit models come with these conventionally hinged side-opening twin rear doors that open through 90 degrees and can be latched into place. Then, through 180 degrees, if you pull this yellow lever to release them. Now, the useful option for these doors to open a further 270 degrees is available on the L3 medium wheelbase version, provided you don't get the Econetic version. And this feature is standard on the Jumbo L4 long wheelbase models. You get a useful integrated step incorporated into the bumper, and there's the option of a hatchback-like single top-hinged rear door. Though if you go for that, then you're going to have trouble getting a forklift close enough to the back of the vehicle to fully fill the space available. The loading height, typically around 668 millimeters, isn't especially low, so it'll help that even bulky stuff should go in okay. With even the smallest short wheelbase medium roof variants like this one able to offer a rear door aperture 1565 millimeters wide and 1748 millimeters high. That height further extendable of course if you upgrade to the H3 high roof body style. Going for the taller roof of course makes a big difference to the tallness of the items you can fit inside. Whilst this H2 medium roof model can restrict you to a height of 1,886 millimetres, going for an H3 high roof variant can see you enjoying up to 2,125 millimetres of total load height area. The figures I've quoted, by the way, are for front wheel drive models. Go for a rear wheel drive variant and you'll need to deduct 100 millimetres of height in each case. The different roof heights, along with your selection between short, medium and long wheelbase, will of course determine your load space volume. Go for an H2 medium roof panel van like this one and you get 10 meters cubed with the L2 short wheelbase, or 11.5 meters cubed with the L3 medium wheelbase. If you're likely to be transporting bigger loads regularly though, you'll probably be more interested in the H3 high roof body shape. Now here you can expect 11.2 meters cubed with the L2 short wheelbase and 13 meters cubed with the L3 medium wheelbase. 
The biggest van of the bunch is the huge jumbo version, which uses that H3 high roof and mates it with the L4 long wheelbase to deliver as much as 15.1 meters cubed of load volume. This version only comes in rear wheel drive form and all the other cubic meter figures I've just quoted are for front driven variants. And you might want to remember that if you go for the rear wheel drive option with any of these, you'll need to deduct about a half a meter cube from each of the volumes mentioned. Ford must be aware that some of its segment rivals offer variants that improve even on the Transit's jumbo model's load capacity showing. Volumes of up to 17 meters cubed are possible from models elsewhere in the sector. But the demand for large panel vans that big is very small. And what's on offer here is certainly very usable. I've given you the figures, but they might not necessarily mean that much. So let me now try and put those capacities into some kind of perspective for you. The Transit that I've got here, an L2 H2 short wheelbase medium roof model, is the smallest in the range. But even it can take up to three Euro pallets or carry eight by four building boards on their sides thanks to a load space length of 2,900 millimeters. Make full use of that space and you'll be glad of a payload of up to 1,453 kilograms. The load space length increases to 3,350 millimetres on the L3 medium wheelbase model and culminates at 4,073 millimetres in an L4 jumbo long wheelbase version, able to easily swallow up to 4 euro pallets and shoulder a hefty payload of up to 2,281 kilograms. You may have to watch the width of your load though, the 1784mm total load space width that all transit panel vans share narrows to 1392mm between the wheel arches. Smaller loads of course can be loaded in through the sliding side door where there is an internal step with the handily placed yellow grab handle to aid access. Now one of these is standard with a second one on the options list. This offers an aperture that's 1,300 millimetres wide on the L2 short wheelbase model, a class leading width that makes forklift loading and unloading easier. Obviously, you can increase the width by choosing one of the longer L3 or L4 wheelbase options. The height of this aperture can be as much as 1,600 millimetres high if you go for the H3 high roof model. It's obviously a little less with this H2 medium roof variant. A second sliding door on the other side of the vehicle is optional, provided you haven't decided upon the Econetic version. Whichever transit body style you choose, to keep your cargo from moving around, loads can be secured to a couple of tie-down points at the base of the full height steel bulkhead. Plus there are four more positioned on the side walls alongside each side of the cargo area, making it ten in all. Loading at night will be aided by optional super bright LED lighting and provided you avoid the base trim level, you get this easy to clean load floor plus half height trim boards. Though when it comes to guarding against scrapes and dents, there's really no substitute for the full ply lining kit you can arrange through your dealer. As for operating costs, well, service intervals on the 2.2-litre Duratec TDCi diesel engine are decently long at every 30,000 miles or two years. Ford has also cut the maintenance time needed over the first 93,000 miles of this vehicle's life from the 5.4 hours needed by the previous generation version to 4.2 hours in this one. Ford have analysed 23 common repair items to prove that this vehicle is class leading for non-scheduled maintenance times. For example, the labour required for a rear brake disc repair has been cut from 2.6 hours to 1.3. And in fact, thinking to keep maintenance costs down is in fact everywhere around this vehicle. Take the multi-piece rear bumper for example. It's designed in pieces so that if you damage it, you'll only have to replace the section that's actually affected rather than the whole thing. That's eco-friendly. And the TDCI power plant's been designed that way too. At launch, the main engine options were only Euro 5 compliant, but customers were offered the option of 
a 125 and 155 PS HD T6 variants, meeting the tougher Euro 6 standard. Under the bonnet in all models, though, there are features like exhaust gas recirculation and a coated diesel particulate filter unit. And buyers can go further by specifying an auto stop start pack that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. That feature is included as standard if you opt for one of the frugal oriented Econetic models designed to take operating efficiency to a much higher level. These also include recalibrated engines featuring smart regenerative charging, acceleration control and a battery management system to improve battery life, fuel consumption and ensure ready-to-go reliability. Of course, the driver can do his or her part. All transits get a gear shift indicator light and the Econetic variants build on that with the brand's clever Ford Eco Mode setup that encourages economical driving behaviour. As a result of all of this, Econetic versions of this generation transit models are 6% more frugal than their direct predecessors. They're capable of delivering a combined fuel consumption figure of as much as 44 miles per gallon, along with a best-in-class emissions as low as 169 grams per kilometre. Even the largest, heaviest and most potent 155 PS H3 L4 high roof jumbo model manages a combined cycle showing of 36.2 miles per gallon. Talking of fuel, expensive errors at the pumps can be avoided by the unique standard fit Ford Easy Fuel System, which does away with the need for a fuel cap and stops you putting petrol in the nozzle. What else? The Transit is protected by a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty, extendable up to five years, plus 12 years of anti-perforation corrosion cover. This is Ford's first truly global large transit model, selling in 118 markets across six continents. More importantly, it's a definitive choice in its segment. True, it may not be the very largest or most powerful choice you could make, but in terms of efficiency, technology and day-to-day -day usability, it's a segment benchmark in a way that its predecessors never were. But then those predecessors had to be virtually all things to virtually all businesses looking for a reasonably large van. This time around, since the introduction of the slightly smaller Transit Custom model lineup to suit the market for medium sized LCVs, this, the largest Transit design, is free to focus solely on those wanting a really big van. And it is big. The US style front end suggests that, and the loading bay with volume increases of up to 11% confirms the fact. It all means that at last, Ford's ultimate load carrier is number one for a reason.